Hey everyone, I'm Lee Bundrick. I'm with the Kiowa Conservancy, and today I'll be giving a presentation about one of our projects on Kiowa Island to address barriers to coastal resilience using stakeholder engagement to discuss nature-based solutions. So a little bit about my organization. I work for the Kiowa Conservancy. We're a nonprofit accredited land trust that works on Kiowa Island, and we look to measure, manage, improve, and advocate for the ecological health of Kiowa Island and its environs. This includes Kiowa Island as well as Southern Johns Island, including parts of Seabrook. Uh, we protect about 2,282 acres of land through conservation easement and fee simple properties. And our, our intent for our organization is to provide natural habitat to wildlife. However, over the past few years, we, so, we started to see some impacts to both natural habitat, which has impacted a lot of life, but also to our residential communities, which has caused a lot of problems. Um, and mostly this has revolved around severe flooding uh, due to severe weather and coastal tides, as well as um, sea level rise, which we've seen about 1.1 foot sea level rise in the Charleston region over the, over the past 100 years. Uh, with two to four projected over the next 50 to 100. Uh, so this is cause for concern about the resilience of our region and how to protect these natural habitats and our residential communities. Um, so this has sparked some interest from the town of Kiwa Island and the Community Association to look into ways to improve resilience by doing planning efforts and looking into flood mitigation and sea level rise efforts. Uh, so this has resulted in some comprehensive plan amendments at the town as well as um, some resilience <clears throat> opportunities that have been uh, explored by the community association through planning efforts and the expansion monitoring programs. Uh, one of the things about our community is we're environmentally focused. So everything in our community since the 1970s has been planned with nature in mind. Um, but lately what we've seen is that resilience has set as a catalyst uh, for new opportunities for collaboration within our community and looking into ways we can improve our resilience. So in 2020, we applied uh, to uh, the Emergency Coastal Resilience Fund and we are awarded in 2020. Uh, so this is funding through NOAA from the uh, Emergency Coastal Resilience Fund with National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. And uh, what we receive funds for is a community project to address barriers to coastal resilience by engaging with our stakeholders and trying to find a consensus on the use of nature-based solutions on Kiwa Island. Uh, and in this presentation, I'll be talking about our stakeholder engagement that we engaged with our stakeholders in three phases uh, that gradually allowed us to get additional information and learn, learn more about how we can explore the options of nature-based solutions on the island. So for this approach, we took a combined uh, community resilience approach with the technological and community uh, aspects. And to, for this, we were able to get a more holistic understanding of hazards and vulnerabilities on the island as well as to consider the impacts of both humans and wildlife and how we can improve the resilience of both. So for the first stakeholder engagement, we uh, first phase of the stakeholder engagement, we use stakeholder interviews. And the primary focus of these interviews was just to gather information and to at least look at ways of finding avenues that we can uh, explore that can allow us to use nature-based solutions in the future and find ways that we can uh, find common ground between our stakeholders. Uh, so the semi-structured interviews that we, we uh, held with our stakeholders address three concerns that I'll be going over in the next few slides. So the first thing was the current environmental concerns on the island. And this based on questions about coastal flooding in general, as well as some severe weather events that people are concerned about over the past few years. Um, and a lot of this information was supplemented by previous efforts and current ongoing efforts with the community association to look into sea level rise and flood mitigation. And then we discussed uh, their current mitigation strategies. Uh, strategies. What, what type of traditional strategies that they use on the island in order to counteract some of the problems that they were seeing? And what were the determining factors for using these specific approaches and why that might have convinced them to use one approach over the other? And what other options were they considering at the time? And then finally, we concluded with their thoughts on nature-based solutions. Uh, what we were trying to do with this last section is look at their perspectives as well as what kind of trade-offs would they would, be, they would be seeing with using these specific solutions over gray infrastructure practices and maybe some factors that might influence their decisions on using new practices uh, in their uh, repertoire. 
Uh, and then finally, we looked at their concerns with marsh restoration and, and how we can go forth with doing that. Uh, and then at the end of this, we followed up with questions about receiving additional information and reviewing any other sort of different things that we were doing down the road uh, during the stakeholder engagement process. What we received in the first set of stakeholder engagement uh, in, in our observations was that there was general acceptance of using these novel practices. Um, most people were looking for new ways to, to do things over using the traditional practices uh, based on the maintenance involved with them. And we were also urged to look into hybrid gray green infrastructures to see if we can get a specific practices that provide the benefits of having gray infrastructure while also having the natural benefits of using green infrastructure. And then finally, what we did is after looking at all of our notes for all of our observations and all of our stakeholder interviews, we, we identified concerns as well as topics for success for exploring new options uh, for nature-based solutions. Uh, this included the functionality and aesthetics, mostly the form and function of new uh, projects on the island, as well as looking into the long-term investment of these projects. What are the costs associated with it? Not, with just, not just with the installation of these projects, but also what entails the maintenance of these projects. And then finally, we looked at two other things, which is the regulatory approaches. What types of regulatory programs do we have to go through in order to um, pursue these projects? as well as how do we go out and we educate and uh, produce outreach products for our community in order for them to also get buy-in for these products. Um, so looking into ways that we can reach out to our residents as well as our other stakeholders on the island in order to make sure that the practices that we do uh, install in the future are uh, acceptable and they work for the community. And then in the second phase of the stakeholder engagement exercise, what we did is look towards developing a catalog and reviewing this catalog with our stakeholders in order to get feedback on the, the novel practices that we explored. Um, so in this, in this process, we, we did an iterative review with our stakeholders as well as technical experts in order to get a better understanding of what would be acceptable on the island as well as what, what are the specific details of those novel practices that would uh, make them successful in the long run. Uh, so in the end, we came up with a localized nature-based solutions catalog, which looked at two different areas of the island, which is the upland areas and the tidal wetlands, and focused these uh, specific sections on marsh protection and stormwater conveyance, respectively. Uh, within these sections, we have detailed information about 15 practices uh, from site selection, installation, all the way to the maintenance and monitoring of these projects. Um, what we were attempting to do with this catalog is to make this accessible enough for anybody to pick up and read. Uh, this includes residents and any lay people who decide to um, explore some of these practices, while also providing enough detail for, for people like engineers and landscape contractors to pick it up and also understand the technical specs of actually putting these projects in the ground. Um, so for each, se each section, we included uh, detailed information about each practice. Um, and for the upland areas, we had about seven practices outlined, and we even included some, in, um, some illustrations uh, providing a view of what the projects would look like um, on a planning, um, a planning diagram and providing a look from just the aerial view and side view to kind of give an example of how these, these uh, practices can not only provide a function, but also provide some beauty also on the island. Um, and we did this similar to, similarly to tidal wetlands where we provided kind of a synthesis of each practice, which uh, eight practices were uh, ultimately um, uh, found out. And we, uh, we provided an illustration of this and kind of detailed information about each one of them. Uh, specifically, what we wanted to do for, for the tidal wetlands section is include information about the, the suitable site conditions that would be needed for putting in these projects. As you can see from the red box, uh, and at the bottom right, uh, we provided uh, information about what specific environmental conditions would work for these specific sites and uh, for each project. And this was based on information from a variety of sources, but mainly from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources Living Shorelines recommendations uh, that were produced in 2019. Um, and kind of tailoring into this, uh, at the same time, concurrently with our stakeholder engagement, we were engaging with research and monitoring projects with the College of Charleston. Um, so first was the groundwater table study with Dr. Tim Callahan, uh, the marsh vulnerability study with Dr. Norm Levine, 
and also an integrated watershed study uh, looking to create water budgets uh, using water resource information on Kiwa Island. Uh, with all these projects, they were funded by the town of Kiwa Island and coordinated by the Kiwa Conservancy uh, to gather information about our island. Uh, this includes um, 24 monitoring wells that we put out on the island to start monitoring groundwater. Uh, this included historical changes in short marsh shorelines over time since 1977, as well as uh, looking at a vulnerability analysis of specific sections within the marsh to understand uh, the, the vulnerabilities and resilience of those marsh sections um, as they are. And then finally, uh, we have the engagement of phase three, which is the final steps that we're looking to uh, pursue uh, sometime in the near future. Uh, what we're looking to do is take all the information that we've gathered and inform our stakeholders, not only of the environmental conditions, but of the nature-based solutions that we have proposed. And what we're looking to do is create a consensus on these proposed nature-based solutions um, and also use this as an opportunity for uh, pursuing resilience efforts in the future. Uh, our intent with this last phase is to build trust and start to assist stakeholders in ongoing resilience projects uh, after this project ends as well as uh, future projects that may come, come along in the future. Um, and we're, we're continuing to work on this project, but we've had uh, many, many assist, much assistance and support uh, for this project, mostly from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and the town of Kiwa Island, who have funded both the research monitoring projects, as well as the stakeholder engagement exercise. Uh, we've also received uh, support and expertise from the South Carolina Sea Grant Consortium, the College of Charleston, and the Kiowa Island Community Association. Uh, and then, uh, as well as these other folks that are listed below who have provided uh, extensive uh, consulting help and uh, support that we greatly appreciate, and also our wonderful stakeholders who provided so much information that uh, would uh, help us with this project and look at ways we can improve the resilience of Kiowa Island. Uh, and if you want more information about this, I'm more than happy to talk to you. Uh, my email is lee at qlconservancy.org. And uh, you can also reach out to us uh, via our office phone uh, or my cell phone. So thank you.